to be able to be in the middle of the busiest road and to sit down there for two seconds and to zone into yourself is where you know that you're meditating. You probably tapped into a parallel dimension reality that your soul is probably experiencing. So you as the, the identity and the entity that you are on in this reality probably woke up in a different reality. Assalamualaikum everyone and welcome back to another episode of The NSJD Show, Pakistan's first fitness and self-improvement podcast. Today's guest is our first yoga instructor, very short intro, and her name <laughs> is Nida Abasi. Nida, how are you doing? Very well. Thank you for having me over. No, it's great to have you and great to have the conversation we were just having offline. I know. <laughs> yeah, so let's, let's have uh, that conversation in more detail now. Yeah, yeah. Let's. Uh, so you were just telling me. Yeah. That uh, academically, you've studied something else. <laughs> <laughs> yes, academically, I'm a filmmaker. So I've studied, I've gone to film school. You're a filmmaker. And yeah. did you pursue that a bit? Well, I mean, um, I've had my hands at journalism. So I've done that. And then I've done various other things. I've done media stuff. I've done, I've been in marketing. I've been in PR. I have a furniture business. So like... There's, there's, a, there's a bunch that I've got under my belt at this point. Right. <laughs> yeah. But uh, a running furniture business or not right now? Well, I mean, it's kind of on a halt at okay. the moment because now that I'm a full-time yoga teacher, I really don't have time for it and I don't want to make time for it anymore either. This is, this is more fulfilling for me. Yeah. But how did you get into yoga? I mean, I've been practicing yoga off and on for, let's say, the last eight years. Mm -hmm. um, never did I think that I would get into teaching yoga. Um, so then it kind of maybe perhaps uh, a few years ago when I really like dove deep into my own personal practice. So the people around me, they would be interested in, you know, kind of practicing with me. And some of my friends would practice with me. Then I would off and on teach online. I wasn't really in favor. We're usually never really in favor of teaching yoga online because I feel like it's more um, an in-person thing uh, to be kind of sharing that experience with whoever you're teaching to. Um, but I didn't think that I'd become a full-time yoga instructor, teacher, trainer, whatever you want to call it. But uh, I did start teaching a little over a year ago and um, there's no going back. I love it. So how did you get into teaching? Like what drove How you? did I get into teaching? It's, I think we yehi tha ke, um, there was a, like people would, were literally hounding me at some point, you know, where, you know, everywhere I'd, I'd go, people would want me to teach them, you know, you know, friends would want me to teach them. And then I have some very, very, very close friends who are already in the fitness industry. And this I'm talking about Karachi. So they would be on my case all the time. And, you know, and Karachi is a really big industry when it comes to, comes to fitness, you know. I mean, there's a lot of awareness there. You have so many studios. You have such amazing yoga teachers there. I mean, that's where I started, um, you know, practicing yoga. I've practiced with some incredible people in Karachi, you know, who kind of led me on this path. And I'm absolutely grateful for all of them. Uh, but then I have friends who are um, fitness trainers also. And one of them who's a very close friend of mine, she really got on my case for the longest time where, you know, she pushed me to pursue this. And I wouldn't listen to her because I'd be like, you know, I don't feel like this is my calling. I, I was very happy, like practicing it by myself for myself. Um, but then I thought I should maybe go do a teacher training and then see how I felt about it. And when I went to do my teacher training, even the teachers that were teaching me for the teacher training, they were just like, we're, we're surprised that you're not teaching at this point. And that's where I thought that maybe perhaps that if everybody else is seeing it and I'm not seeing it, maybe I should give it a shot. Right. And I did. And, and it's, it's been a beautiful journey. Great. Yeah. So for, for the layman, how would hmm. you define, actually, you know what, um, <clears throat> what is the definition for a layman of hmm. yoga? Mm -hmm. And then what is meditation? And what two, is the difference? Two, two different, there's two different things altogether. Yeah, exactly. So the word so yoga the in itself means the union of heart, body, mind, and soul. Okay. 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 So it's basically bringing all four elements of you as a human, the spiritual, the mental, the physical, the emotional, bringing it together in, in absolute harmony. 
सो पीपल यूजली थिंक के योगा आप करते हो और फिर योगा आपको लीड करता है मेडिटेशन में ठीक है एंड फॉर मी ऑल्सो आई फाउंड मेडिटेशन थ्रू योगा आई हैव ऑलवेज बिन अ वेरी हाइपर ऑन द गो पर्सन राइट आई वुड नेवर हैव द टाइम टू सिट स्टिल एंड इवन पीपल हु यूज टू मेडिटेट दिस आई एम टॉम बायर्स अगो हु यूज टू मेडिटेट एंड हुड बी लाइक यू नो वी थिंक यू नीड मेडिटेशन आई जस्ट बी लाइक नो आई डोंट यू नो लाइक एम वट इज दिस एंड एंड आई वुड ट्राई टू डू इट एंड इट जस्ट नेवर लाइक सेट वेल विद मी so when you go into the history of yoga meditation came first and then came yoga yoga is the the physical element of yoga so b- before when the yogis used to sit in meditation they used to sit in meditation for hours and days right so the physical element the physical limb which is the yoga as we know it the the physical asanas uh, they called asanas right mm-hmm. uh, the physical asanas were created to help the yogi sit through their meditation so all these poses that you do the flows and the the, the stretchy i mean i'm going to speak in layman terms right mm. uh where you're stretching yourself out it's all to facilitate blood circulation in your body and to keep that going so that when they're sitting for hours they don't feel the need to like get out of their meditative state of mind and start walking around right yeah. that's the so you mentioned four aspects of a meditation and the f- no no four aspects of meditation what the yoga itself means oh sorry yeah yoga the balance is like the, and the harmony of those those yeah. four yeah, uh, yeah, okay yeah. and okay that's interesting um so what is what, what is the meditation what is the layman definition of it there's no layman meditation uh, definition for meditation i a meditation is meditation you know um i think meditation for everybody is a very personal thing to experience mm-hmm. or to go through right um how so i feel everybody needs meditation right everybody needs to take out time to sit still and sit with their selves and hum log jo bahut zyada karte hain na ki jo har waqt bhag daur bhag daur bhag daur and then we're like agitated and we're frustrated and you know we're always like oh something's missing in our lives and we're always chasing after the next thing or the other is usually because we're running away from ourselves we all have inner problems inner th- you know things that we how to put it wait um we all have demons demons is a mm. much harsher way of saying it right we let's say we have all have traumas everyone's gone through some form of trauma and trauma kind of never ends right you go through childhood trauma then you have other trauma in your teenage years and when i say trauma it doesn't have to be something big or life changing it can be something very small it could be something very small that maybe your friend said to you in grade 6 which has left like some sort of an imprint on you which has kind of now developed into a personality trait today right so we throughout our lives we suck in trauma our body soaks up trauma we soak up trauma mentally and then a point aata hai zindagi mein ki hum cheezon se bhagte rehte hain na hum confront nahi karna chahte apne aap ko confront nahi karna chahte meditation ka jo sabse mushkil aspect hai wo yahi hai to be able to sit still with yourself and with your thoughts and that's why people are not able to meditate if you if right now i told you to shut everything off and i told you ki ab hum agle 10 minute ke liye bilkul koi baat nahi karenge you can't touch your phone you mm. can't do anything you just have to sit still and do nothing the weirdest thoughts will come up in your head mm-hmm. and and if you sat still for let's say 15 minutes without interacting without anything you would want to run out of this room because now all these thoughts and things that have been suppressed by your mind or your brain over the years koin kuch na kuch to pop up karega aur wo pop up karega and you will run from it you will not want to face it you will not want to confront it you will not want to deal with it meditation forces you to sit still with yourself with your with all this baggage that we carry with ourselves with this weight that we carry with ourselves through the years it allows you to acknowledge it and to release it that's the whole thing it's about simplifying life and it's about releasing the load the burden right so so for a layman i would say how i mean i would want everybody to give meditation a shot a chance just for this just so that they are able to let go and release off the baggage that holds them down from actually realizing their true worth and value so 
what is the um, you could say the proper way of doing it if someone wants to try it for the there's first no, time? I, I, there's no proper way of doing it. Now, you just no, sit no. still. Okay, so they call her. Her every human being is an individual, right? How? So uh-huh. the most important thing which I kind of missed out on is we're all energetic beings, mm-hmm. right? So you start meditation, karna shuru karte ho, hai? Aur aap, when you start realizing that yes, there are things that I should let go of, and this comes with practice, right? And it comes with consistency. You start, t- in, you know, tapping, you start tapping into your energetic self also. At the end of the day, we're not just our physical selves. We're not just this body. We're not just the 3D. Jo aapka religion bhi kehta hai, you, your soul, your soul, your soul. How do you tap into your soul? Your soul isn't dead. Your soul is not waiting for you to die so that it kind of leaves your body. Your soul is always there. And it's tapping at you, asking you to wake up to who you truly are and to like realize and understand your true potential, right? So meditation helps you tap into your energetic self, which is your true self, right? So now, because we are all individuals and we have our own energetic print, up to like scientists also, I mean, you look at Instagram, there's so much information there on YouTube and stuff. Kis tarah aapka apna, you know, uh, unique thumbprint hai, usi tarah aapka sabka energetic print bhi unique hai. So I would never say that there is one size fits all for meditation. Do what works for you. I mean, if you hug a tree and you feel like that you get that energetic release, do that. Maybe that's your way of meditation. I was going for a hike right now <clears throat> with, a, with a friend of mine. And um, we were trying to look for like a spot to sit down and meditate. And we'd gone deep into the mountains. We couldn't because there were monkeys who were trying to throw rocks at us. <laughs> <laughs> so there were no humans disrupting our meditation. It was the monkeys. The monkeys. And it was getting scary. Okay. okay. <laughs> so <laughs> even though we tried really hard, we spoke to Mother Nature and we we're like, listen, we come in peace. Let us meditate. The monkeys wouldn't. So we're walking back uh, towards our car and she's like, you know, damn it. You know, I mean, this was the perfect weather to meditate and the perfect spot or whatever. And then I got her talking about what it is that she wanted to meditate about today. You know? And so she started talking about her dreams and her manifestations and where she sees herself in the next two days. And it was, and it was just such a beautiful setting. And I could feel her energy. I could feel her like really living what she was talking about. And then I looked at her and I was like, you realize that we're doing walking meditation right now. So there is a thing called the walking meditation too, right. you know? And she looked at me, she's like, yeah, I do feel like I'm in the zone right now while I'm talking about this. So there's, there's no correct way of doing, there's no right or wrong way of doing it. It is, it's what helps you get that release. You know, um, some people like doing guided meditations. People like to put on their headphones, find a link on YouTube, you Mm. know, and uh, listen to what the person is saying, guides you through whatever, like there's, there's thousands and thousands of like, you know, videos up on YouTube now. So you can do a guided meditation. Um, some people like to do it to sound frequencies, you know, which kind of helps ease them and get, gets them into the zone. Some people like doing it in, na- in nature, like we wanted to do today, you know, just listen to the sound of the birds or the stream flowing or, or the, you know, the trees rustling. So for everybody, it's different. Some people actually prefer doing it right before they go to sleep. So... Talking can be meditation also. You know, just, uh, hum, hum, uh, Islam is zikr hota hai. What is zikr? Mm-hmm. People get together and, it, and they talk about the greatness of God, right? That's yeah. meditation. As long as you feel like that you're tuning into a higher self, that's it. That was going to be my question, that when do you know you're doing it right? So that's... You, you feel it. You feel it. You feel it. Uh-huh. Yeah, I wouldn't say something as crazy as oh, out of body experience ho gaya, and you're mm-hmm. like, you're just looking at yourself and no, I mean, that mm-hmm. also happens to people, but that's like really advanced, like next level Buddha level yeah, stuff yeah. we're talking about where you just like run off and live in a cave for the rest of your life, you know, yeah, yeah. but uh, no, no, but it can happen when you're living in the city also, but um, that that's like really advanced level, but you, you feel it like, I mean, For me, the first time I actually thought I was in a meditative state was after I had done like a crazy yoga session, like two hour of my own uh, personal practice. And so you end your yoga with the last pose, with the final pose, it's called Shavasana, which is the corpse pose, right? Where Mm -hmm. you just like lie down and you release. And that's basically the reward at the end of the the whole practice. 
And I think it was many, many, I could never get through Shavasana. I couldn't even get through like 10 seconds of Shavasana, so I would always skip it. So this one day I, had a, I did a very gruesome session, and at the end when I was in Shavasana, for five seconds, I felt it. I got into the meditative state, and it was so sweet, and it was so, and I cried, and, and I think there was a lot, of, um, a lot of heaviness that I was carrying with me that, that day, and I just forgave myself in those 10 seconds, and I forgave the people who I thought had done me wrong, and that was it. I mean, I, I woke up after the, woke up, yeah, I opened my eyes after those 10 seconds, and I was, an, I was a changed person. And that's when I was just like, this is it. This is the key to Became everything. Became a believer. This is the, yeah, this is the key to everything. This yeah. is the key to everything. So, I mean, even if I wouldn't, if I don't do my own yoga practice for days, meditation is something that I don't skip. Abhi agar hum baat karte karte, like if, even if we take like five minutes off and I feel that, you know, like I, I need to meditate, I'll take 20 seconds and I'll switch out and come back. You know, for me, it's become like that. Mm, interesting. Yeah. Also, another misconception is, uh, which I uh, tell people who I facilitate meditation with, you don't need to sit in an empty room by yourself in silence to meditate. That's not it. To be able to be in the middle of the busiest road and to sit down there for two seconds and to zone into yourself is where, where you know that you're meditating. Wait, let me clarify that. You don't need to go looking for a space. The minute the, the, that point where you feel like you're losing it and you're at your worst and you feel like life doesn't make sense and you want to break something, that's the time you need to sit down, close your eyes and meditate. That's when you need it the most. Not when you have the perfect situation and the perfect setting. Okay. Yeah. That, that's what I thought, that if I want to meditate, I need an empty room, no lights. No, 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 nothing. no. I I I train at a gym 13 hours a day. Yeah. Hazaar banda hota hai. And ab pehle to log used to like look at me in a really weird way and now they know okay, wo me, me train karte karte like side pe ja ke khirki ke paas baith jati hu and I'll be meditating and initially people used to think it was so strange ke wo weights bhi gir rahe hain to shor bhi ho raha hai music bhi chal raha hai ek pagal hai I mean kya kar rahi hai mm. and you know but it's it's easy like once you see you have to become very present you have to become present with yourself and stop thinking about what's going on around you and that's the thing we get so distracted by everything around us that we stop living in the present moment so meditation yoga all these things bring you to the present they keep pulling you back keep pulling you back to the present moment interesting yeah but i guess uh, like the way that you can do it at the Shor wagara bhi hai and you can sit down and do it. practice ke saath hai. Haan, wo practice ke saath hai. But it's not difficult. Main koi saalo se nahi karti aari. Like, I mean, for me, meditation is something that actively how I practice it and have been practicing it, I would say three years. Right. So I wouldn't, I can't even say 10 years, you know, as opposed to my physical, my, my yoga practice, the physical element of my yoga practice is still longer. But meditation is something which is very recent in my life. Mm-hmm. but the sweetest part of my life <laughs> yeah for sure <laughs> interesting yeah. yeah i guess meditation is um a part of many different religions in uh in one way or the other for sure yeah, yeah. and uh like for example if i take mm-hmm. islam we have our prayer but the way we mm-hmm. offer our prayer we're like nah, jaldi, 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 wohi baat hai, so we're missing the essence and of dekho, it prayer is also a medit is a state of meditation right so just how may yoga ko kehti hu, ki, um let your, I, I usually use this uh, line that let your life be a moving prayer. Mm. Okay. Okay. Sometimes I'm too, I don't offer my prayers, yeah. you know, and a lot of people, because I look a certain way and, and I practice yoga and I do things. So they think that I'm probably not religious. I mean, well, it's nobody's business, but mm. being religious, not religious is, is my own thing. But the mask of when I offer my prayers, like women, meditative state like you know it's about connecting with the divine meditation is about becoming present with yourself with your energetic self but then your soul is connected to the divine to the creator so when you connect with your energetic self you immediately are connected to the divine and that's why we pray right we pray to god 
So met when I lay out the prayer mat to say my prayers and when I start offering my prayers I'm in that zone again like I mean it takes me really long to finish my namaz because I don't want to come out of it mm. when I'm in my meditation I don't want to come out of it so when I'm doing my namaz again I don't want to come out of it but yeah yeah na ke humne to wo farz banaya hua hai ke ab ye time hua like clockwork like you would do any other chore you want to do it and get it over with Yeah, and you're thinking about something else. You're not. And you're thinking about something else. You're not dialed in. You're not dialed in. Yeah, you're not yeah. dialed in. That's the whole point. Yeah. So I'm telling you that if you're dialed in and tuned in with God all day, you're in a state of prayer all day, mm. which is such a beautiful feeling. Okay. I yeah. mean, if I want to have a conversation, or if I want to connect with God, or ask God for something, I don't have to wait for the azan, or I don't have to wait to roll out my my prayer mat. I can mm-hmm. do it wherever I am, however I am, whatever situation I'm in. Interesting, yeah, and and that's you could say true, uh, you could say true mastery of meditation of you know connecting anywhere, anytime. Yeah, uh, ma- mastery I think is a big word. Okay. Um, I would say a label. Okay. I don't think anyone ever becomes a master at anything. Uh, so that's like true meditation. Ha! Huh, like I mean, somewhat, yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. to be able to connect in any mm. circumstance and situation. Right, yeah. and so you're saying that you discovered all of this through yoga. Through yoga, yeah. Med- meditation, mm. like I said, I'd, I'd never wanted to give it a shot. It just didn't make sense to me. Mm. I just feel like, what is this mumbo jumbo? <laughs> I mean, no, honestly, I'm being very honest. That's what I, I'd be like. No, I couldn't. I couldn't get. I, I couldn't do it. Yeah. But that was it because I myself. I. I mean, if I were to be very truthful. I was running away from my my own feelings and emotions and my my own truth, you know. I was running away from it. So I didn't want to acknowledge what I was really feeling. Aur mujhe pata tha ki ye hoga ki if I sit with myself in that stillness, I would be forced to acknowledge. Mm. And I was running away from it. I was running away from the confrontation with myself. Yeah. But it's not so difficult. It's interesting you mentioned Shivasana because I had a another person on the podcast. She was talking about the same thing mm. that um, she started yoga and in Shivasana, um, she used to thank different parts of her body mm. uh, that I thank mm. my hands for helping me do sure, this yeah. and all that. Yeah. And she also told me that she ended up crying when she did it mm. for the first time. So yeah. that was like, and you were saying the same thing. Yeah, you also when you felt it for the first time. When I felt my meditative cry. state for the f- first time, yeah. Yeah. Shavasana, I would do it again, right? But Achha. Shavasana for me would, was more of a physical release than anything else, right? Because I've made sure that my practice has been very gruesome, right? So, so I used to look for, I, I would get through my practice telling myself Shavasana, aray, Shavasana, aray, Shavasana. Aray. Achha, so for Achha. me, it would be like, oh, okay, now I'm releasing okay. the, the the physical element. Right. But eventually, it forced me to dial in into the spiritual and the mental. Yeah, and that that's when I cried. Yeah, so for sure, even मेरे पास भी जब initially people who start coming in for yoga who haven't done yoga initially, तो हर कोई एक mindset के साथ एक एक idea के साथ आता है ना कि अच्छा yoga is this and yoga is that and there's another really funny story I'll tell you after this. A lot of people cry in their first few sessions because, and I tell everyone when they start their sessions with me that you're not coming here for physical release. emotional and mental release will happen and if it happens let it out because you're not just purging the body physically you're purging it in every and any way and shuru mein log bahut resistance put up karte hain but then a point comes ke the body needs to purge it needs to purge itself of its heaviness and that's why people fall sick all the time and then you have things like cancer and tumors and and people and now it's it's i mean har ghar ki ye kahani hai right and everyone says ha uski zindagi mein itna stress tha aur uske sath ye hua tha which has led to this and led to that and it's a fact these things this trauma that we carry these burdens that we carry eventually turn into physical ailments because your physical self can only take so much right ab kitna zyada apne engine ko करते रहोगे करते रहोगे इवेंचुअली इज क्रैश डाउन वन वे और द अदर सो इज इट बेटर दैट यू टर्न टुवर्ड्स सम फॉर्म ऑफ मूवमेंट एंड रिलीज योर सेल्फ ऑफ इट नॉट सेइंग कम टू योगा एंड रिलीज इट या डू एनी काइंड ऑफ मूवमेंट यू नो वेदर इट्स क्लाइंबिंग अ ट्री आई डोंट नो और रनिंग और हाइकिंग और साइकिलिंग और जस्ट वॉकिंग और समथिंग मूवमेंट या सो इट्स लाइक दैट suppression which what what people think is the answer is suppressing it mm. it's processing and releasing that's society the society ne bhi to bana diya na abhi mm. hum jo baat kar rahe the pehle bhi mm-hmm. ke wo aapko society you're raised in a society i'm not saying just pakistan anywhere ke jahan pe 
you're not allowed to even acknowledge your feelings most of the time or talk about your feelings and i think ke wo cheez ab ja ke change ho rahi hai where people are encouraged to talk and speak and when you had first reached out to me to come and speak on the podcast and i said i'd be more than happy to come and talk is because of this because we need people to step up and be honest about their experiences and what they've gone through to be able to communicate it to other people to tell them that it's okay to talk about what you've gone through what you're going through without the fear of judgment and creating safe spaces which we'll get to later on yeah um this is the funny thing i wanted to tell you was that one of my new clients who started coming to me she's also going through therapy and she's she's very young and um so i've had a really bad experience with therapists when i was younger i had only ever been to one um and i really needed i really needed to talk to a therapist and uh it was a really bad experience i'm not even going to get into details of that so she had um, gone to her therapist or her doctor or something so she's like oh your you know your reports are looking a lot better and uh, i'm assuming you've started exercising so i'm very happy for you you need you needed to build exercise into your whatever and she got very excited she's like yeah i'm going to yoga and i'm doing yoga like a couple of days in the she's like no do proper exercise yoga is not exercise and i'm like what a, where is this ju- judgment coming from so i was like bring your doctor to yoga <laughs> one day and i yeah. want to see her get through one session yeah so yeah. there's so many misconceptions yeah the doctor is probably thinking that they just sit and they have Lata their eyes closed yeah 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 but uh, i mean <laughs> yoga mein uh, ek to dekho phys- physical element hai yoga ka then there is a really big element of yoga which is pranayama the breathing right mm-hmm. and there are different forms of breathing मैं आपको भी अगर ब्रेथ ऑफ फायर कराऊँ ना पंद्रह मिनट आई मीन यू प्रॉब्ली लाइक रन अवे फ्राम हेयर लाइक आई मीन दीज थिंग्स कैन गेट वेरी इंटेंस बट दैन दे गेट इंटेंस बिकॉज इट चैलेंज योर बॉडी इन अ वे वेर यू नेवर चैलेंज योर बॉडी यू नो सो इवन इफ यू सिटिंग डाउन आप क्या कहते हैं क्रॉस लेगेट जमीन पर नहीं बैठ सकते ज्यादा देर आप वो मुझे एक घंटा बैठ के दिखा दें it's such small little like these these things that annoy me where okay, anyway that's their what, problem <laughs> what what is out of my curiosity what is uh what did you just call it which breathing breath of fire breath of fire what I is that i mean it's possible but what what is so, it like so uh, um mm ye bhi lambi baat ho jayegi um so there so breath of fire is to basically um it's a certain way of breathing where you kind of um let me get the words for it properly okay. i'd have to show show it to you but i can't show it to you is to create heat in your body as it kind right. of kind of self explains itself mm-hmm. um it's it's the way you breathe so you're you don't focus on the inhale so much but you focus on the exhales more so you breathe through your stomach so you go okay and that generates a lot of uh heat in where you would say your core is right yeah. so i would do it before my core sessions because it just kind of warms up the core in exactly. a very uh-huh. crazy way right agar main unko core workout na bhi karau apne students ko aur main unko 15 minute yahi kara do na wo do din unka core dukhta rehta hai theek hai acha ha to itna intense right. ho jata hai because you're you, you're just snapping your stomach in 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 you're not breathing like us tarah se that you would normally breathe mm-hmm. so there are various ways of breathing there are various ways of inducing various states of minds through the breathing you know to calm yourself down to hype yourself up breath of fire is really good to be doing in the winters also because it helps you generate that internal body heat right. but that internal body heat that you generate then you can use for physical action because you're gearing yourself up for the day okay yeah. okay that's interesting yeah i've uh i've heard a few i've listened to a few podcasts around breathing and mm-hmm. you know how you can u- use that to calm mm-hmm. yourself and you mentioned that breath of fire is doing more exhales than inhales mm-hmm. right and you're concentrating more on the breath going out out exactly. out than in, in in yeah 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 so basically carbon dioxide is leaving your blood stream more as more, opposed yeah. to normal jo hamari breathing hoti yeah. hai and yeah. there's this um there's um you could say a technique yeah that is a technique mm-hmm. that i've heard from a neuroscientist mm-hmm. he says basically that if you want to calm yourself down uh you focus more on your exhales mm. and there's this technique that you inhale and then you uh, like exhale just a bit and then inhale again again 
and then breathe out and yeah. he says that that calms you down much more than that's simply breathing in breathing out that's another form of pranayama that's another form of uh, what's, breathing what's that i don't called? know the exact word for it uh huh uh, yeah but we in a so pranayama now this is another school of yoga altogether so you have a lot of yogis that just focus on this pranayama the, is breathing breathing techniques breathing, huh, breathing, okay. yeah so right. there are pranayama teachers so we have mm-hmm. an amazing yogi who's moved from karachi who's here now so she's a pranayama teacher so her forte is breath work uh, because i'm breathing pe aa gaye i think we should talk about this also breathing is so essential it is moments of panic when we stop breathing theek hai so even when i'm conducting my sessions or anyone that i'm talking to i tell them to keep breathing keep breathing like a broken record for one hour jitni their session hota hai Uh, notice this in your in your daily life now after we've had this conversation and stuff get the minute you get into a stressful situation or something aapka breath constrict hona shuru ho jata hai because you forget to breathe and that's why panic attacks happen and other things happen and you have the breakdowns and stuff which hum kehte nahi saans nahi aa raha wo is liye saans aa raha hai because aap pichle ek ghante se you'd forgotten how to breathe you know and now there's so much focus on breathing and breath work where i actually want to hopefully one day start reaching out to schools and stuff and i want to start conducting sessions with younger kids and start teaching them the importance of breathing so i think physical to ek chalo hai hai movement hai but i feel like the the importance of breathing is so much more important your breath is your anchor you're nothing without your breathing the day you stop breathing you're dead you know and aap sochte nahi ho it's such a simple thing because i mean it's something that you take for granted right that you're breathing you're exhaling and it's such a like i mean that's what your body is doing for you autopilot by default but what we don't understand is ki hum apne apni apni life force ko khud shorten kar rahe hote hain with the way we are breathing so again bre- breathing is another very important thing that one needs to focus on very consciously right yeah and is there a proper way to breathe especially when you're doing yoga and There's no proper way. Um, uh, so if I were to talk about uh, the older yogis or the ancient yogis, they believe that you can elongate your life by breathing. So mm. the yogis believe that you are born with a number of breaths allocated to you, right? Okay. Okay. So now it's up to you how you consume your breaths. So a very silly example, I'll give you a fitness person. but yogis don't believe in cardio okay well okay well i take that back maybe perhaps some yogis do i don't want oh, to like generalize i get it why because you're, sh- you, you're using up so sh- many ha, more so many, uh, so many more breaths so ha, ha. they so uh, one school of yogis i would like to say because i'm not so well versed in where this is coming from uh do believe ke don't uh, involve yourself in things where आप अपने जो है वो सांस जो है यूज अप करो फॉर नो रीजन एट ऑल सो शाउटिंग स्क्रीमिंग फाइटिंग ऑल ऑफ दीज थिंग्स फजूल में आप अपना जो है सांस जाया कर रहे हो एंड देन मेडिटेशन एंड योगा एंड ऑल ऑफ दैट आपका रेस्टिंग हार्ट रेट को लोअर करता है यू नो दैट राइट आपका वो लोअर होता है यू कंज्यूमिंग लेसर ऑफ योर ब्रेथ यू स्लोइंग डाउन योर इन हेल्स एंड यू स्लोइंग डाउन योर एक्स हेल्स देर फॉर यूर बिकमिंग अ मच काम version of yourself also right yeah interesting <laughs> <laughs> so you have that's i think that's true if you don't take it in a very literal way that yeah, we yeah. have a ha, limited ha, ha. number of that right? example yeah. Yeah, ha, ha, ha. yeah yeah agar i mean wo to i don't believe in that <laughs> myself completely but till yeah. i like see some more facts on it but but yeah i mean but when i heard about it it may it made sense up when you shout when you scream when you fight with someone when you get into a confrontation you know so up with just just a baat karo to you you're falling short of breath right but then you're using up a lot more of your oxygen yeah therefore <laughs> shortening your life <laughs> yeah 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 i actually have a question that you know once i it's about a year ago i went to the northern areas with my friends and mm-hmm. we we did a little hike we went to the top of the mountain not a very big mountain and then we were they, everyone was like let's do a little meditation session here mm-hmm. guided meditation theek hai breathing and you lying mm-hmm. down the, mm-hmm. the person is telling you how to breathe theek hai and yeah, then yeah. holding your breath and all mm-hmm. that ab sabne wo kiya and a friend of mine she even fell asleep during it like that's wonderful ha huh. aur mujhe kuch bhi nahi ho raha tha mm. i think that was my first time maybe that's why sure uh, yeah but uh, some tips from you on how to effect have an effective session on meditation 
is it like more practice hum online conduct kar lete hain we can do a podcast on and we can have you lie down here no but dekho wohi hai ke maybe it's okay it's it's what's coming up in your head right mm-hmm. ek to main hamesha ye bhi kehti hu ke don't attach an outcome to anything ab wo ye bhi hota hai na when some is when some is going to a meditation or they know they're going to meditate they they attach an outcome acha ab to koi bada zen experience hone wala hai mere sath aur phir jab wo nahi hoga they be like what what is this yeah. you know ke okay, ye to this is all this is all what like you know whatever false theories and stuff kuch nahi hota like you said ke kuch bhi nahi hua so a you had gone in with an attached outcome ke ye to mera yehi experience hoga ke i'll feel something some release or whatever but i am pretty sure ke us waqt some other thoughts would have been popping in your head and then you would probably try to take them out and try to dial yourself back in phir koi thought aati hogi yeah, yeah. phir then you would dial yourself exactly. back aur teen din mein meditation khatam ho gayi hogi ye hua tha ha that's what happened yeah aur ye sab ke sath hota hai uh-huh. so i so you will not get it the first time aur wo main yehi bata rahi hu na ke jo a lot of people i see around me also wo they fail to tell you ke this is a not a one time thing but b whatever is coming into your head at that point don't flush it out wo aaye isliye rahi hai thoughts because you're in that meditative state your body is making you think these things because you're supposed to acknowledge them whether it's about ke uh mera phone silent pe hai ya nahi hai i'm just saying mm-hmm. itni choti si bhi baat acknowledge it and on your exhale release it आप उसको ब्रश ऑफ जब करोगे ना तो द थॉट हैज एंड लेफ्ट यू इट्स स्टिल इन योर हेड सो वो पांच मिनट बाद फिर आएगी या वो कुछ और मॉर्फ होकर आएगी व्हेन अ थॉट कम्स इन योर हेड व्हेन इट्स टेकिंग अवे फ्रॉम योर मेडिटेटिव स्टेट रिलीज इट ऑन योर एक्सहेल्स एंड आल्सो अनदर वेरी गुड टिप व्हिच हेल्प्ड मी इनिशियली वाज दैट कीप द फोकस ऑन योर ब्रेथ एवरी टाइम यू फील लाइक दैट यू आर यू नो काइंड ऑफ मूविंग अवे फ्रॉम दैट state of mind or maybe you haven't even gotten into that state of mind the best way is to when you're inhaling and you're exhaling keep the focus on the ebb and flow of the air going in and out also you can bring the focus to the sound of the breath going in and out and that will when you dial into that mm-hmm. at least kuch second ke liye to sukoon milega acha yeah Yeah, th- that could be a reason as well because of the friend who suggested that he said that you know if you do this right, you're gonna feel a tingly feeling in your fingers and you're gonna feel this and that. So I'm saying that when will the tingly feeling come? So that's why the outcome is attached. Yeah, but ha, ha, ha. this is the thing. Everybody is different. Everybody yeah. is different. I can feel a tingly feeling. Maybe you will never feel a tingly feeling in all your meditations, but maybe what you feel, I'll never feel my whole life. Mm-hmm. You know, I made a meditation conduct ki thi with um, with a bunch of uh, ladies that I know, and everybody's from a different part of the world. Like we were all d- people with different nationalities, right? I was very stressed conducting that uh, that meditation because wo ek din tha and it was a very powerful day, and we were manifesting also and and everything. and it was incredible how when we all came out of our meditations i guided them through the meditation and i told them main shuru mein guide karke fir main chhod dungi then you guys go on your own separate journeys right but it was amazing to hear where they all went in their meditations when us tarah se wo force guided nahi ki ki ab ye feel karo wo feel karo whatever i let them into it for the first 5 minutes and the, i think the meditation probably lasted for 15 20 minutes and then i had to get them all out of it individually ye bhi nahi ke okay snap out of it i want i had to go to go and see ke kaun kitna deep kya hua hai kaun nahi kiya hua so i had to slowly like maybe pull somebody stow get shake somebody on the shoulder really? and then get them out because okay. you, if somebody's gone too deep you don't want to fucking sorry it's okay <laughs> you, know, <laughs> it's you, right. don't, you don't want to scare them out of it also na ke wo yeah. ekdam se wo you know uth ke wo shock mein uthe and it was it was like i i don't want to talk about their experiences because then they'll know i'm talking about them and who i'm talking about mm-hmm. but uh, someone saw golden light someone someone and one of them actually thought complained to the other woman sitting with her on the sofa she said you know why would you keep shaking the sofa and she's like i wasn't she's like initially she's like initially i thought there was an earthquake so one of them actually had a proper out of body experience and this is a lady who's never done meditation before really she's never done meditation before and she was the only one of us that day 
who had a proper out of body experience so that shaky feeling that she felt and she and she was the last one to come out of the out of the meditation and we were respectful about the fact that we didn't pull her out of it because she wasn't there wow so it was you know and then at one point i was like acha ab zara zyada ho gaya i need to bring her back but it was beautiful so like that's what i'm saying you know i mean i see this every day people that i put through meditation or facilitate meditation for rather it's it's a different thing for everybody out of body experiences i've heard a lot about this through a friend his mm-hmm. uh, apparently his brother is really into this and mm-hmm. so i've heard that the thing is that you know once you're doing it correctly is that maybe you do it and then so is does it work like this that's what i've heard that you know you in in that out of body experience you go and you read a page of a book you come back in your own body and then you go back and you see that book and you see ke acha ji iske page pe waqi likha hai jo maine dekha hai acha waqi yahi likha hua hai so that means i had that ye, actually ye, ye experience to kuch ye, is this I, real or I, what is this about i i i i would have to have a conversation with him to understand ke usko किस चीज से ये आउट ऑफ बॉडी एक्सपीरियंस इंड्यूस हुआ है पहली बात बट देखो आउट ऑफ बॉडी एक्सपीरियंसेस होते हैं हो सकते हैं ठीक है वो सारा डिपेंड करता है हाउ यू डायल इन टू योर एनर्जेटिक सेल्फ right mm-hmm. i mean there is a thing uh, known as astro travel i don't know if you want to get into it oh yeah this is uh, <laughs> what i'm talking about so it's astro projection astro, astro projection yeah, astro yeah. travel yeah, yeah, yeah. so abi when i was um, in thailand in january and i had gone to meet my yogi friends there so this time around the new thing on the island was astro travel everybody was practicing astro travel and talking about astro travel and i honestly had never heard of astro travel before that mm-hmm. so astro travel is yes inducing yourself in a very 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 deep state of mind where then you can travel through time apparently also and then you can travel to wherever you want to be you know so that's that's uh, a different universe <laughs> so right <laughs> yeah I, i think that requires a two hour podcast on its own <laughs> okay yeah. okay yeah but that's astro travel that's right. astro travel and yeah. that's that is very advanced meditation type things the wo to ye hai ki pehle aap ek mahina apne aap ko pehle ek kamre mein band karke us tarah ka baatein kare na apne aap se mm-hmm. and and you, you you tap into your uh, consciousness us tarah se and then you can play with that yeah Now, i am not there okay <laughs> also i don't know if i want to get there yeah it can i don't, I don't it can know be scary if, it can be scary but um jaise okay so one of my yogi friends who was trying to um he's here in advance um, in his very advanced in his meditations and things like that um so he was telling me that the first time he tried to experience it so he was in his room and uh, he induced that meditative state and like what the both insane yogi hai karke wo um he felt that he was out of his body because he felt like he could see himself lying down but he was not a believer of the astro tra- he st- still wasn't at that point 100% but he he said that he could see his body on the bed and then he thought he walked around the room or a room he did not know if it was his room and he thought he touched a fabric which felt like the curtain in his room but he wasn't sure whatever and then he snapped out of it it was a very short experience and he's like then i got up and i and he's like i don't think i've ever paid attention to how my curtain feels because who does right and then he's like i went and i touched the curtain and i looked at the curtain and he's like it was it so but that's the extent of my experience with astro travel through somebody else <laughs> but yeah right you know i once had a very very interesting dream i would call it a dream because mm-hmm. i'm not a meditation type person mm-hmm. right so i i went to sleep at an odd hour of the day mm-hmm. right and you know when you wake up from that you're like ek kaun mein kya ho raha hai yeah to so i i woke up and then i looked at my phone that's the first thing that you know we do and my the room was dark cuz it uh, it was like evening winter evening okay. so the room was dark i had no light i mm-hmm. i grabbed my phone i tried to you know unlock it and then it wouldn't unlock oh, so geez. i was like oh, okay my i was like okay my the battery is dead 
<laughs> so I flipped the phone around and the battery it fell into my hands. And that doesn't happen with, you know, yeah, sure. phones today. Yeah. So I was like, I don't know what's yeah, going on. And then downstairs I could hear the TV on and my mother listening to a drama. Okay, sure. So, so, you, so you knew you were alive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I went to okay, I'll switch on the light in yeah. my room. I went to the switchboard and the switchboard was uh, taken out of the of the wall. I was like, how did this happen? And then I tried to open the door and the door wouldn't open. And I could mm. hear my mother downstairs. I was like, what's going on? And then I was like, hey, is, is this not real life? What, what's happening? So I went back to my bed in the same position that I was mm. in previously. And I woke up again. Exact same situation, pitch black room. My phone is in front of me. And I was like, please, please, I hope the phone unlocks. Please, the phone unlocks. It unlocked. And then the light switched on. Everything was normal. And you know, the drama that I could hear, my mom was listening to it. It was continuous throughout this experience. There want, was no gap in do between. Do you want to talk about this? Uh, yeah. What, what, and, and that day, um, I guess my mind was really messed up because I heard that um, my papa had died that day. Oh, I'm so sorry. To hear yeah. So it brought back some memories of, you know, my own mm. father's death and all that. So I guess... That my mind was in a very weird state. That's why I fell asleep. And then, but, but when I woke up, I was in my room, but I was not in my room. And then I woke up again and I was in my room. So, okay, so your soul is larger than your body, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you are just like a speck of your soul experiencing this life through this particular body in this time and zone and in this dimension. So your soul is experiencing multiple realities in different dimensions, in different galaxies, all at the same given time. Um, now, this is, I don't have the scientific data to prove this, mm -hmm. neither do most people, but, but that's what it is. Your soul is not limited to this part of your body. So you may have just, that's a glitch in your matrix, basically. Wow. For sure. Yeah. Because that was probably a parallel do we want to be talking about this on yeah, this podcast? Yeah, yeah, sure. I'm up for that it. Was pro you probably tapped into a parallel dimension reality that your soul is probably experiencing, was experiencing at that particular moment, but in a different dimension in space and time. Mm. So for that mo for that timing, from what I'm listening to, so you as the I, the identity and the entity that you are on in this reality probably woke up in a different reality. Yeah. Which was morphed and not similar, uh -huh. but not the same. Yeah. And then zoop, you snap back into your reality, which you're familiar with. Yeah. It will not make sense, but it makes sense to me. <laughs> it it kind of does. Yeah. I had a similar So that's probably a glitch in, in your matrix. In, that's a good way to put it. A glitch but that's in what my, it in is. That's what it is. Yeah. yeah. And I think we're all looking for a glitch in the matrix. At least yeah. I am. You're looking for like But meditation se yehi hota hai na this is a, um meditation se yehi nahi hota i should use better words um you have to understand and realize but jab, um, i don't know if you know we want to talk about manifestation and law of attraction and you know and all of that why do people advocate it so much that you can achieve the you know the life of your dreams by manif manifesting is because you're aligning Whatever you, per, if you can visualize your dream reality, that means it's happening somewhere out there in, in some dimension or time. It is happening. If you can visualize it and if you can feel it, you can make it happen by literally aligning yourself with it and letting the universe align you with it, mm -hmm. right? So um, let's say... Your dream reality is that you see yourself living in the south of France in the next three years, but you don't believe it, but you can visualize it. You can feel it. That means that it's already happening somewhere in time. If you can feel it, you can visualize it. If you close your eyes and if you can visualize it, that means that a, some part of you, your soul is already experiencing it. That's why you're thinking it because your soul is giving you a signal from that point. Ke, bro, ye ho hum to ye kar rahe. Now it's up to you sitting here, whether you choose to align yourself with it. But that way we can visualize a lot of different things, right? Sure. Yeah. But which one is it that your soul, you, you would know. Okay. What you truly feel you like feel, is, okay. yeah, you would, I mean, yes, this is it, you know? Yeah. 
then that is it because your soul is already experiencing it through another life form or your life form from another level or plane hmm interesting yeah so um <laughs> <laughs> good good talk interesting so you know i can hear in my headphones i can hear uh, oh, all of what you're wearing i'm so sorry no 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 that's a good thing so it brings me to my next question when what are these different things that you're wearing oh uh, yeah well khair i've always been obsessed with wearing rings and i up to me kam pehenti hu pehle main bahut zyada pehenti thi i mean now that i look at my hands yeah pehle main bahut zyada pehenti thi i used to be called i've been called the knuckle duster um ab mujhe log thor bhi kehte hain nahi thor nahi thanos bhi kehte hain little kids call me that my kids call me thanos uh, every now and then no but a lot of things i wear now are for different things uh, crystals that i wear so these two are for protection anxiety okay. um and then this is for protection this is for fortune Th- these this rock this rock is for fortune and this is just for good luck so different crystals help with different things different crystals have different energies and i'm a believer of it for sure right and what about the eye is that like the evil eye yeah okay. i'm hoping these work <laughs> <laughs> right yeah i'm hoping these work interesting yeah. but you're hoping these work you're not sure if they work abhi tak zinda hu i'm sure something's <laughs> working somewhere yeah yeah no with the crystals i i truly believe that they have their healing energies and stuff and uh, a lot of people that um who do start their work of self healing self love and all of that i do recommend certain stones and uh, crystals to them they're wearing them i i feel that it has helped them too this wearing your jo hota birthstone is that that help? also helps yeah that also helps but i mean itni sari cheeze hain you know i mean there are things for protection there are crystals for protection things that can help you counter anxiety things that can help you with self love things that can help attract your soulmate if you're into that kind of thing but you're getting married so <laughs> <laughs> i think you've already there you're already there uh for wealth for health mm-hmm. so yeah is bit of scientific data ab hai theek hai a friend of mine got into an argument with me a couple of weeks ago she's like give me the scientific data i was like bro itna sara padha hai bhej dungi tumhe you know uh-huh. so us with experiments bhi ho rahe hain ke um i recently saw this video of this um the scientists where to enhance the uh the energy of the crystal he put like a little carbon wire on top of the crystal and then they did a little test and it's it's just amazing everything's a breathing entity right everything's yeah. on this planet for to serve a purpose ऐसे नहीं अल्लाह ने डालनी चीजें कि ये लो मैंने बस आई वाज फीलिंग अप स्पेस या ट्रू राइट सो कमिंग कमिंग बैक टू टू योगा um we were talking about acro yoga acro so yoga i had yeah. a question in my mind but you kind of answered that my question was that you know i've seen you mm-hmm. doing this you know yoga with a partner yeah. that person is lifting so yeah. that's that's acro yoga, acro yoga. I, i presume yeah. Yeah. right so what's the what's the purpose of that <laughs> form of or like why why do you need to do it with a partner uh what um, does it enhance the experience because it's no so it's uh, acro is acrobatic right okay, okay. so and it's do- usually done in partners because you need a base who bases you who will lift you and then there's a flyer who flies okay so diff- different okay. poses different variations and things right so um so acro yoga is a lot about trust right so when you are doing acro with a partner there has to be like immense trust with that person right because i mean like i gave you an example if somebody's got me hanging up like suspended in air where i'm balancing on their foot i really got to trust the person beneath me knowing mm. that i'm not going to fall and split my head open so uh yeah it's it's uh, it's uh, it has to be done in pairs usually but uh, usually ye bhi nahi zaruri ki do log hote hain there there are um things where there are three people four people like it's not limited to two it can be done in twos but up or log bhi add kar sakte hain it's it's just it's a it's a variety of poses and a variety of things that you can do with it right yeah and so where did this uh, like come from Ac- acro yoga like um, acro yoga i don't i don't know if it has um if it stems from the ancient forms of yoga uh-huh it could be i think it's a more of an evolved 
westernized version i'm again not the one to comment on the origins of it mm-hmm. i've recently started practicing it but uh, absolutely love it i think it's just such an amazing experience and like i was telling you that for me acro yoga is just amazing because i feel like it builds a very strong community you know and uh, going back to what uh, what i had said earlier the yoga in general for me is about creating safe spaces for people to come together and developing stronger communities something that we really lack you know like safe spaces community where people can just come and be you know and uh, yoga in itself like if we just take the authentic form of yoga right is all about mind and body awareness and how you align your body to your mind that you become so dialed into your body that you don't think about the climate the weather who's around you not around you somebody seeing you not seeing you your thoughts leave you and that is why it's so easy that in shavasana a person can go into that meditative state because apne apne aap ko tada apne dimag ko detox bhi kar diya hota body ko aap kar rahe hote ho apne mind ko bhi aap kar dete ho now with acro yoga it takes so much out of you i mean it makes you so aware of your body and of who you are what your limitations can be or not can be and your body has a way of surprising you and anyone who's ever come to acro initially jab aate hain to bade intimidate hue hote hain nahi hum nahi kar sakte ya kaise karenge gir jayenge and the first time they do anything you should see the joy on people's faces where they're just like wow like i was able to do that and to see that in people is just a wow for us also okay you know we can give a little bit of that to somebody um but acro is 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 amazing you know like acro yoga is something now which is all physical touch you cannot do without making contact with the other person right like i mean there's no way there's there's no going around it to koi any soch raha tha oh main kisi ko haath laga raha hu ya mujhe koi haath laga raha you're so dialed in into your own mind and body awareness at that time you don't think about it and when your sessions end we call it an acro jam and the jams end you open up and you people end up talking about their feelings their things you know and they start talking about how, how they felt like that their bodies held them back and we live in pakistan 99% of people here have self body image issues okay not because they were born with it but because society has such a stereotypical way of like labeling people that har kisi ka koi na koi issue hota hai koi patla hai to usko mota hona hai jo mota hai usko patla hona hai like you know is ridiculous so when you come to acro and you see what incredible stuff your body is capable of it's it's victory you know it's it's freedom it releases like i mean it frees you you know from that from that label from that box from that limitation and it's it's incredible to see what it can do for people and how it can build a really strong community What's your preferred form or favorite type oh, of yoga? Oh, there's no favorite type. No favorite type. I love it all. Look, I mm. don't just do the vinyasas and the ashtangas, you know, jo aapke jo traditional form of yogas hain. Um yeah, acro is something I'm very actively into, but I also do a lot of aerial yoga. Oh, once I start doing aerial yoga, then it's impossible for me to get out of the swing. Oh, the one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah I see <laughs> you that. <forgot>. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yoga. Okay. So that is also something that I love doing. I love it. I think I'm uh-huh. generally a very acrobatic person, so any 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 given point if I get a an excuse or the reason to like hang upside down, mm-hmm. that's it. I'm not coming out. Yeah. Right. So agar mai even if I'm not doing my yoga and stuff, then if agar mai samne rings hongi to phir mai apna wo calisthenics mein bhi yahi kar rahi hoti hu ki then I'm upside down on the rings also. But yeah, but I enjoy um aerial a lot also. it's um nahi nikla jata and anyone that i've introduced to aerial like i i teach aerial but i mean itna zyada yahan pe nahi like i have very few clients for that but uh, random people who i've introduced uh, to the aerial yoga at the gym also once they hang upside down once they just get hooked they get <laughs> yeah they get hooked literally and figuratively <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah yeah they get hooked nobody wants to come out of it Oh okay. Yeah. That's But it's challenging because um <clears throat> aerial like calisthenics demands a lot of upper body strength, demands mm-hmm. a lot of core strength. So if you don't have that or if you are lack that, I would not normally put somebody in the swing because I wouldn't want them to injure themselves. Because if you're someone who's just starting it out and uh hota but dekh chuki hu fitness kar chuki hu people can get freaked out. You know when sometimes if their head is towards the ground and their feet are not 
they'll be fine or wake them up panic ho jate hain ke you know because it's a new experience it's mm. a new sensation blood rushing to your head and stuff so yeah but right. uh, if i had to pick between any one of them i would say ariel ariel yeah your instagram also you know <laughs> testifies to that <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah ariel i love ariel like i'm not uh, disregarding any other form of yoga like i I love like for me inversions and arm balances of like that that's 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 my that's my hit you know mm-hmm. anything which is challenging and I like I you know like a lot of people their goals everyone has different goals right like people have like uh, flexibility goals and they have like back bend ro- goals they have other goals mine is just like upper body and inversions that's my thing and uh, then I get to kind of incorporate that in aerial and then I get to do that in calisthenics. So I think it's just kind of it's 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 a it's a chain of things. Yeah. So are you actively doing calisthenics as well? I try. I try when I get the time. Okay. Um le- uh like I what? injured my rotator cuff 2 years ago because I was being stupid and I, because I thought ke oh main to bahut strong hu main to bahut sari cheeze bahut jaldi unlock kar lungi but mm. even though I was told that I need to take it slow and I thought ke in my own way I was taking it slow but um I did injure my right rotator cuff it took 6 months to heal at that point but then it took me an additional 2 years to really like resume my calisthenics stuff so I'm taking it very slowly very slowly um I try not to set goals for myself when it comes to calisthenics now. I let my body kind of lead me towards mm-hmm. the next move I'll unlock. Human flag. <laughs> I'm trying to get to the human flag, but okay. I ju- I'm just not getting the time to kind of put an extra additional efforts towards it. What are the ones that you have done up to now? Yeah, I mean I do skin the cat essay mazak mazak mein. Like woman Which one is to, that? Uh, where you go upside down and you flip and then you come back. Okay. Yeah, so wo to wo to kab ka unlock hua hua hai um front lever maybe I can do a bit uh, I I do pull-ups and things so mai kar leti hu. I mean basic cheeze mai kar leti hu but wo ye ki I know ki if I got down to it I'd probably unlock 20 more things tomorrow. Just not getting the time. so i have to make that time for that like like i told you like i didn't think that calisthenics was anything that i could ever do in my life you know i'd look at videos and i'd be like oh my god i'm too old to do this you know i wish i'd started this but but no there's no age to be starting anything and this is something i want people to know if there's something they want to do there's age can never should never be a limitation or a barrier yeah yeah, yeah often time i also think the same thing sometimes yeah yeah ke nahi ye to teenage mein agar shuru karte hai to fit hota no i'm yeah. i'm 40 this year and the stuff i'm doing at 40 i i don't i mean i mean i wish i had started sooner or earlier like you know if i've always been acrobatic but like i never really took it seriously mm. i wish i had started it earlier but being 40 has has not presented itself as a hindrance at all yeah at all yeah so in uh, through your clients and mm. uh, through yoga and so also do you also client um, guide your clients through meditation or is it primarily yoga that you're doing um i guide them through meditation okay um, i mean so at the end of the yoga when you have shavasana so obviously you have like a short quick little shav- okay. shavasana oh, yeah, yeah, thing yeah. Uh-huh. and then shavasana ke baad then i always take like a minute or two to kind of wrap it up right. with a small message and things um and then people who want to do specifically just specifically want to do meditation then they just come to me and we just do meditation alag se right yeah so so there's no like oh we have to do yoga and then we will do meditation okay yeah so i'm sure you'll have quite a few but if you can share one success story that you know someone that came to you they were in a very bad state in mm-hmm. their life uh and then this <laughs> helped them i don't know it could be My, like a self realization that they had it could be something else okay, so overcoming an addiction uh, yeah, anything yeah okay so <laughs> so i work with a lot of people going through a lot of things right so it's revo- like that's when we started this conversation why i'm not doing my furniture anymore and stuff because this has just become so much more rewarding and um, success story so i don't know success story or not but i think it was that moment where i felt like yeah maybe i am doing something right you know that was that, you know i everybody has imposter syndrome one way or the other right to so, you know when people come to me and they come to me a lot for healing or to talk and that's been the case in my life my whole life ab jab wo professional usme mere paas log aate hain na so i want to be able 
I want to be able to guide people so that I know that I'm guiding them in the right proper way, you know. Um so so it's 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 nice to see it's on a on almost a regular basis I get messages from clients or clients will come to me and be like you know we ha- we had a breakthrough with ourselves and you know we're doing better at this and we thank you for being there aur mujhe foran hota hai ki mujhe kyun keh rahe hain like why like you know this is nothing that I'm doing this is the work that they're putting into themselves you know so but I'm slowly and gradually trying to become accepting of that but um There's a friend of mine who um if he ever watches this will know that I'm talking about him but he was going through a, a very bad mental state and he wasn't talking to anybody about it he hadn't really opened to me opened up to me about it either and uh he's a fitness freak himself so i know that i could have never lured him towards yoga halak mein se kehti thi ki tum aa jao let me he needs rehab for his shoulder and his lower back which most of you men do cuz sab sab ki lower backs khatam hui hui hoti hain weights utha utha ke utha utha ke to you know so wo har waqt complain kar raha hota tha apna shoulder ke bare mein maine usse sirf ek mobility exercise ek din karwai thi uski cheekhe nikal gayi thi to i was like listen you need to come to me like just come to me for 5 minutes let me get you started on your rehab nahi 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 khair anyway so he was going through a bit of a mental like roller coaster um some time back and uh, i was like let me like allow me to introduce you to meditation nahi 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 it can't change my life it won't do anything it won't do anything so one day under the pretense of taking a walk on one of the trails we went went off on a walk and um, i got him to sit in a corner and i was like just close your eyes but so you need to meditate kar rahe so i i got, guided him through like a very short like 5 minute sort of a thing jahan pe i think saturday sunday tha to rush bhi tha trail pe Five minutes sort of a thing. Many, I opened my eyes and I'm looking at him. So he did zone out somewhere, but something happened with him in those five minutes because then he didn't want to walk anymore. He was like, "I want to go home," which I was like, "It's a good thing if he wants to go home." It sparked something in him because after that, like I didn't meet him for many many weeks, but he'd go on the trail by himself almost every day, and he would go and meditate by himself every day. And then one day he sent me a video and he's like. I can't believe I'm going around hugging trees. So for me, I can't take his name, but like for people who know him or if they knew that he's become a tree hugger, that day I was like I've done something <laughs> right in this wow. world, you know? Okay. Yeah, so so that was that was like a like a amazing moment of realization for me also that even 5 minutes of something like that mm-hmm. could could can send like this you know like a ripple wave and help somebody yeah and have yeah. that ripple effect that they're doing it now without you being there yeah they, yeah exactly so woh hai na ke dekho main main yahi sabko kehti hu ke these things are not about you becoming dependent on me come experience it and then mm just go off on your journey you know just yeah. just go off on it and see where life takes you Mm. in a, in a good way in a, <laughs> hopefully in a good way <laughs> always yeah yeah great uh, so nita last last question from you mm-hmm. that you've done quite a few things over the past few years so what are you now you looking forward to over the next 5 years that you know this is if i'm in this place by the next 5 years then I i'm i know good. exactly what i want to be doing in the next 10 20 5 what? two what? years what? uh just this i want to throw myself completely and fully into uh holistic healing and wellness and uh, that's the goal and the human flag yes <laughs> yes uh, my own personal uh yeah goals will always be there the yeah. human flag to is the beginning oh, okay, <laughs> yeah okay. aur bahut sari cheeze karni hai right. but human flag ko maine abhi wo apna wo banaya hua benchmark ki yahan pe main jis din pahunch jaungi na uske baad mm. i know i've unlocked 10 other things um no so holistic healing i feel i think that this has been my calling since uh, since i was since i can remember i just i think it's taken me a very long time to kind of really actualize and realize and make become a professional so to say in in this area So it's it's all about growing in in the whole holistic realm of things right now. Holis- holistic great. healing realm of things. Great, great to hear. Great to have this talk. Yeah, Very, thank you. Thank you. This has yeah. been uh, 
quite interesting and a lot of fun. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. And for everyone who's still watching till the end, thank you so much (laughs) for walking, uh, watching. (laughs) No, that's something that I say in all the episodes. Don't worry about that. (laughs) First time someone has laughed at that line. So if you guys like the content, please uh, subscribe. If you have subscribed to the channel please click on the like button because YouTube algorithm is like it really helps the video a lot with the reach. And for more physical fitness content, mental fitness content and self-improvement content, please continue watching the show. And also for our international listeners, you will be coming here video pe aa hoga, that the audio is available on Spotify, audio and video. So you can take that option as well. 